um, we've all taken important lessons from what we have discussed so far regarding analytics, people analytics in general, and so on and so forth. Um, today promises to be equally exciting, if not more, because we have um, some amazing things to do today, right? Um, we are going to be doing data, data magic today. We're going to, I mean, turn to data magicians. And it's interesting um, for you all to, to be here. Okay, so uh, before we get started, a little bit of introduction um, so that for those people that were not part of any of um, the first two sessions that we did. So this training is a people analytics training organized by Reliance Info Systems um, in partnership with Modiva. All right, Modiva is a, an edutech um, learning, right, and harm of, of Reliance Info Systems um, that helps organizations, IT teams within organization to be able to fast track their journey um, with learning the requisite IT skills um, for their organizations. While Reliance Info Systems is, of course, a global IT organization um, that help customers drive innovations, right, um, across a number of uh, business verticals. And of course, we are three times Microsoft partner that I, like I've always shared. And yes, we are well, um, we are well in line to be facilitating this training and we hope that you get a lot of value from it. So this people analytics session, like I said, is a six weeks training and it offers um, a lot of insights, which we have all been part of, I believe, um, in the past. OK, some ground rules um, once again, or OK, let me start with what we have covered so far. OK, for those of us just joining us today. Before now, we have done an introduction to HR analytics. Um, we've basically broken this down over two sessions. We've deliberated very um, uh, or we've discussed at a very high level the types of analytics where we talked about descriptive analytics we get give examples we've talked about diagnostic analytics we gave we give examples we've talked about predictive analytics we gave and we give examples we've talked about prescriptive analytics we've giving examples as well. After that, uh, we talked about the data analytics process um, from um, understanding or gathering the business requirements all the way um, to implementing and monitoring and even evaluations, right? Uh, we mentioned all of the steps uh, when it comes to the data or the people analytics process. Uh, we've talked about the data analytics tools, um, the tools that can be used for data analytics, and one of them we are going to uh, be using today for our case study. Uh, we've also talked about sources of HR data, right? Um, where, what are the sources that we can get HR data from within our organization or outside? Uh, we've looked at a number of metrics Right, uh, we call them metrics that matter when it comes to uh, HR analytics. And we've talked about a number of them from talent metrics to um, from talent metrics to acquisition to retention uh, to compensation and so on and so forth. We've looked at a number of metrics and we've talked about um, use cases of so when we should use them, how we should use them and so on and so forth, all right? Um, today, we are going to be starting with um, the first of our two case studies, uh, and I'm going to be introducing that in a few minutes, and it's very, very exciting, trust me. 
Um, a few ground rules. Um, so I'm going to be repeating this. OK, so let's start with the expectation like we shared. Um, this training is for HR professionals. The course is uh, the course is beginner friendly. We are not covering any advanced concept and they were going were expected to complete two projects, one in Excel and one in Power BI. And at the end of this training, I mean, we all should have a foundation of the types of analytics, be able to describe HR analytics, applications of um, HR analytics, uh, an understanding of the analytics tools, understand the different HR metrics, and also analyze uh, HR data and build simple dashboards, okay? Our ground rules remain the same. Um, we are all muted by default um, to ask questions or raise concerns. You are only able to use the chat feature. Um, so by being in this meeting, you consent to being recorded. Um, and then so please be careful or be respectful to everyone. Um, all the sessions or all the recordings of these sessions uh, are going to be available after the sixth week. I see some questions in the comments um, regarding making the recordings available. So um, two things why that is not feasible at this time is because these sessions are recorded on Teams. And if you all notice, even if you try to access the recordings in the charts, um, you cannot do that because of some security features that prohibits um, uh, that are in place um, to stop inter-organizational um, sharing of um, license sensitive recordings or data. Um, so the team is going to have to um, export all of these recordings, right, and re-upload them on a third party or on another platform, um, possibly YouTube or LinkedIn, that can be that will be communicated, right? Before we can have access to, to, to that, right? So that is why the recordings are not available at this time, unfortunately, because there needs to be um a lot that will be done on it before it will be made available for everyone. And we also want you to get first and um will I say learning, right? Let's follow the sessions. Let's understand if we need to take notes, if we need to write things down um, so that we get those first hand um, knowledge. Uh, we don't want us depending on the recording and say, oh, the recording will be available. Why do I need to join the sessions? Right. It's important that, that, that you're here. OK, so the recordings will be available, right, um, including all the materials. Last week we shared the metrics um, data sheets. That also will be shared. All the slides, all the presentation slides um, that we are using uh, will be shared as well. We also mentioned that this is a certificate um, course. However, to get a certificate, you need to have a minimum 65% um, attendance, which means that you have to attend um, minimum four out of the six sessions um, that we, four out of the six um, sessions. Um, also, we extended some offers. Uh, if you are an organization and you have specific data problems, not only data problems, um, on any of the solution areas that we touch during the course of this training, you're free to schedule a 30 minutes call with any member of the team. Uh, all you just need to do is to signify in the chat or where we drop some of the, um, the forms to capture feedback or to capture interest, you can please feel free to, to fill that and it may be a member of the team will reach out to you. For everyone that filled the um, Opramadic um, form um, last week, the team would be reaching out to you um, this week, right, um, on how to proceed and move forward with that, okay? Um, so that's as far as the ground rules, prerequisites, of course, we mentioned basic HR concept, basic understanding of MXSL functions, you have to have ability to commit to two hour sessions weekly, and then two hours personal training time, and then you need to have a PC that has minimum four gigabyte of RAM and 250 gigabyte of disk storage. Also, you have to have MX Excel and Power BI installed. Um, if you don't have Power BI installed, not a problem. We're going to share um, 
materials on how to install Power BI. Also, the Excel. Unfortunately, the Excel that the Excel, the version of Excel that is compatible with most of the things we are going to be talking about today are from 2016 and above. So if you happen to have an Excel version that is below 2016, you may not be able to replicate most of the things we want to do. So we strongly advise that you upgrade or buy M365, Office 365 for, for your team. And Reliance, of course, can help your organization on board on, on this as well. So your facilitator remain myself. Uh, my name is again Fatai Sani. I'm a Microsoft Certified Trainer. I'm also a Microsoft Certified Data Analyst. I happen to lead um, the Data Strategy and Business Intelligence um, team here at Reliance. I have a year of experience um, helping organizations like yourself um, transform data into business action. And of course, I've done this consistently for a number of land customers or a number of customers globally. And we've helped them move from data, raw data to insights, right? And of course, you can replicate all of these wins with your organization if you work with Reliance Ecosystem. It's a secret. Okay, so today, what are we doing? I'm going to stop sharing this screen now. And I'm going to be sharing our screen, um, another screen. Okay, so today we have a very interesting case study. I'm going to be dropping this case study in the chat. Please, if you can see my screen, um, can you give a thumbs up? Can you give a thumbs up? Okay, beautiful. Thank you. Okay, so. We have, this is what we are working on today. We are going to be playing the role of an HR analyst called Anne, right? Um, HR, um, Anne has a boss called Janet, and they are currently preparing for an executive meeting sometime next week. So let's take time to read the email that Janet has sent to Anne, and let's see what we can do with it. So this email says, Dear Anne, we're currently preparing for the board review meeting next week. I'm going to zoom in, apologies, so that we can all see it. Someone may be asking, what email uh, client is this? Is this Outlook or, I don't know, I don't know. This is my, <laughs> this is my own <laughs> email client. So. So it says, Dear Anne, we're currently preparing for the board review meeting next week. And the HR team, uh, okay, someone, let me see the chart. Okay, I'm going to be dropping this. I'm going to be dropping this um, Excel sheet in the, in the, in the chat um, so that we can all flow along. So it says the HR team has been asked to come up with a report. So we're currently preparing. Somebody says they can barely hear me. Um, please, if you can hear me and I'm very audible, please another thumbs up. Let me know if I need to do anything to my sound. Okay. Looks like I'm audible. Um, so Miriam, Oluwatosi, if you can kindly um look at your mic settings so it says we're currently preparing for the board review meeting next week the hr team has been asked to come up with a report of our talent management as the hr analyst you have been tasked with exploring our hr database and extracting some insights that can help the management make some strategic decisions leading into the next financial year. It says the executive management will be most interested to have visibility into the following KPIs. We want to know our current staff strengths. We want to know the gender distribution of our workforce. OK, um, we also want to know what is the visa status of our current employees. OK, it would be nice to visualize employees requiring assistance with their visas. OK. Um, we also want to know the aging uh, workforce analysis. 
And what percentage of our employees are close to retirement? What is the current wage bill for the organization? Also, which of our hiring sources are most effective? What sh which should we discontinue? How has our hiring trended over time? Are there any particular insights that we need to glean from this? It may be nice to have this as an interactive dashboard so that different managers and department heads can filter the report as suitable. So this is the business case study that we are working on um, today. All right. Now, let me show you at the end of this, we are expected to create a dashboard. All right. We are going to be creating this dashboard together in Excel. All right. So at the end of this exercise, we are all going to have a created a dashboard that looks like this for the company called Covnag. All right. So if you're excited to create this, uh, please leave drop comments in the chat. Let's know that this is something exciting. So what are we looking at? We want to look at um, Covnag. So this says HR talent dashboard. OK, we want to look to answer all of the questions raised by Janet and we are going to be playing the role of Anne. We are going to know um, the number of employees, the current salary wage bill, um, the workforce diversity, the number of employees requiring assistance with visa, the average workforce. It's be nice to get the gender distribution, um, what is the department spread like? What is the salaries? Uh, who are the employees requiring assistance? What are the favorite hiring sources, right? Um, or the best hiring sources? What is the race distribution like? What is the workforce um, age bracket? And of course, our hiring trend. You know, the most in interesting thing is this is not a static dashboard. So which means that you can filter this dashboard by each department and this is interactive. So um, you can check how many people we can check all of these dynamics across the IT department. You can check it for production department. You can check for sales department. You can check for um, the software engineering department. And of course, this dashboard will respond um, and it's very interactive. Okay, you can also filter by different positions. Okay, if you want to see data architects, you want to see database administrators, uh, you want to know how many employees, IT director, IT manager, how many employees are within these brackets and how do they fare by all the KPIs that we are trying to analyze. OK, so this is the task. Should you choose to accept it, that we are going to be embarking on today. OK, I've dropped the Excel sheet, of course, without the dashboard. I've dropped the Excel sheet in the chat. Um, it's in a Google Drive. If you can access this link. Please let me know if you can access this link and download if you can access this link and download the Excel data set, please let me know you've been able to access it and download it. Note that we are not working on Google Sheets, so don't attempt to work on the on the document um, on on Google. OK, so download the data set. To your local PC and then we are going to make use of it. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's start. OK, so that is what we are doing today. So I've introduced. OK, very good. Someone has been able to access and download it. So let's review this again so that we are all on the same page. OK. The email from Janet, which is the HR director to the HR analyst or the people analyst in this case. 
And of course, it sets a requirement. So remember when we talked about the HR analytics process, we mentioned that requirement gathering or business objective is the very first thing um, on an analytics project, okay? We don't start the uh, analytics project with data. We don't just jump into data and start analyzing, okay? It starts with a business requirement. And in this case, this business requirement is tied to a business problem. The stakeholders in the organization, they want to have some strategic insights into the people's data. And they want to be able to take certain decisions based on the outcome of this analysis. How that makes sense. So at the end of this exercise, we should have something that we can present to management. Um, and then they can decide, for example, what are some of the insights that we can get from this data? OK, how are we compliant with uh, things around maybe gender or um, racial balance right within the organization? Right. What is our aging workforce analysis, for example, and how can we do uh, workforce planning and so on and so forth? What are some of the insights um, that we can get from from this? business case study. So now we've introduced to the problem. OK, let's now look at the data. OK, so this is the data we are working with. It's intimidating, right? It's over 300 rows of data with employees. And you would agree with me that this is usually um, the way data is. All right. So the data analytics process is how we convert the raw data to insights the people analytics process now is how we convert raw people data to insights okay uh, if you download this sheet if you download this excel sheet you're going to see four sheets in there you're going to see a sheet called the business case you're going to see data you're going to see the collaterals that we're going to be using and you're going to see something that says definition okay so let's look at the data in this data, so this is the next step after business um, case study or the business requirement. You can call it requirement gathering. You can call it the business problem, anything. After that is data collection or data gathering. In our case, we already have the data. So let's look at and explore the data, okay? So we see the first column here, we have the name of the employee. Of course, this is a um let me just zoom in all the data here are not real they are not for real employees so um so we have the names of the employees right we have the employee ids okay we have the annual salaries all right in dollars we have the position right of the staff members okay we have the states that they reside in. We have the date of birth. Okay, the date of birth is not looking like a date of birth, but I'm going to show you very shortly how it's a date of birth, is a date. We have the gender, or we can call it the sex. We have the marital status of this employee. We have their citizenship status as well. So, which of them are US citizens? Which of them are eligible non-citizen and so on and so forth. We have the race, all right? So white, black American or African, two or more races, Latino, Asian, and so on and so forth. We have the date of IR, okay? We have the date that this, the staff were hired. We have the department that they currently work in, okay? We have the name of their managers, and then we have, lastly, the source, the recruitment source, how they join the organization, okay? So think of this hypothetical case study and currently related to any people data or people problem in your organization, okay? This could as well serve for, say, compensation. This could serve for, say, HMO data. The same thing could apply to um you analyzing maybe performance appraisal data 
what the most important thing is that you're going to have data organized in columns and rows. OK. This may be a good time to talk about some good data practices um, for HR. If you notice something about this data, you will notice that all of these data are organized and they are all um, they are all organized in columns and rows. OK, now this is the best way to collect data. If you want to analyze data in your organization, um, this is the best way, right, to collect and organize your data. There are some practices that, uh, let me see if I can bring up another screen. There are some practices, um, for example, if we're collecting data, always note that um, attributes belong in the column. So each attribute, for example, employee name is an attribute, employee ID is an attribute, salary is an attribute, position is an attribute, state is an attribute, all of these, each of the attributes must have uh, must maintain a single column, all right? So no two attributes should be in the same column. For example, if you have employee name here, there is no reason why employee ID should be in the same column. This data would be very difficult to analyze. This is why we talk about why data analysts or HR analysts spend a lot of time cleaning data. And that is because from the go, a lot of our data are not clean. So we spend a lot of time trying to clean the data as opposed to analyzing. But if we imbibe these good data practices, right, it makes life easy for anybody that is analyzing this data. So I mentioned one of the best practices, if you want to write it down again, is one attribute per row. I see people also do some other thing where let's say you want to get um, maybe employee phone number, for instance, and then you see, let me just open a new sheet. So you see people say they want to collect, let's say phone number. And then you see somebody do something like comma, Oh, sorry. Comma, and then they, they, they put another number again. Right? This is not ideal, right? If you have more than one phone number, you can have a column for phone number one, phone number two, and so on and so forth. That is the best data practice, okay? One attribute per column. Because if you do this, let's say you even want to, even not for even for analysis, let's say you want to copy all the data here. Maybe you want to send bulk SMS or you want to send um, SMS to your staff. You look at someone who have to spend a lot of time cleaning this data before you can send message. However, if you have just one column per data, it's easy to just pick that and send your message. So again, a very, very good data practice is to maintain one attribute per column. If you know, another thing is consistency. If you know you are going to have employee first name, I mean son name, first name and initials in this place, be consistent all through. If you're going to have first name and last name in the same column, be consistent all through. If you want to create a column for first name, another name for son name, be consistent all through with your data. Don't have some um some data uh don't have some data using first name um last name and then you have um other data using um first name in a different column and last name in a different um column okay so those are some of the uh, some of the insight now i mentioned each uh excuse me so I mentioned each attribute on a column. Another one is each record should now be on a row. Okay, each record attributes on a column, records on a row. So you see that all the records here on the first line is for one person only, one employee only, right? 
Second row is one record, third row, another record, fourth row, another record, fifth row, and that is how proper data should be collected and stored. Okay, now compare it to people that merge columns, please. Merging of columns is a very bad practice for data that you want to analyze. All right, unless maybe this is a, a header or something, but it's usually not best practices to merge data. Let me use two tables as an example um, for you. OK. Let's look at these two tables, for example. You have table one and table two, all right? Table one did all the right things. For example, you have your order dates, region, rep, item, unit, unit cost, and total. Each of these are attributes, and they all represent a single column. Then you have records, um, the dates, east, and so on. They have a single row. Now, let's start from the columns. Let's look at other dates, for example. There's consistency with the way the dates are recorded. Even though this is a month, day, year date, but at least that is consistent, right? If you want to change it, you can change it later. But look at the second table here, okay? You see that there's no consistency with the way the data was, um, there's no consistency with the way the dates were entered. So you see some have dash, some have dots, some have iPhones, and so on and so forth. Some is written as 6th of August, others are written dot, dot. I mean, so this, there's no consistency. And if you want to analyze this kind of data, you're going to struggle. Let's look at the second column. You have region, east, central, west, east. There's consistency all through. Compare that to the second table where we have East Region, Central, Central Zone, right? And then you have another one called Centrals. If a human is looking at this, at this, you can recognize that Central, Central Zone, and Centrals are the same thing. But Excel will not understand that these three are the same thing. And this is very important, especially if you're writing things around states of origin, um, I mean, for HR data, you most likely have maybe states or maybe either state of origin or state of occupancy, anyone. And you see, for example, someone wants to write Port Accord, for example, and then you write some people in the same column, you write Port Accord one word, you write Port Accord two words, or you write P.Accord or someone else write PH in the same column. All of these are not best data practices. If you want to stick with Port Accord, one word, stick with it all through in your data. And that is why data validation is very key. If you are collecting HR data set, especially on sheets that um, you are not the only one working on it, let's say you have multiple people filling the same sheet, it may be a great idea to pre-validate some of the entries. So if you want to write states, of origin, for example, let there be like a pre-filled list so you can look up data validation in Excel, okay? So that people can only select from a drop down as opposed to everyone just typing in what they want. Because if I want to clean or analyze this data, I'm going to spend a lot of time. Um, we're going to spend a lot, a lot, a lot of time trying to clean this. There's this. Example is also very peculiar. For example, you want to write countries, for example. It, you know, some people will write United States of America. Some people you write, you write United States. Some people write USA without periods in between. Some people write USA, just the abbreviation. So if you want to stick to one, you have to be consistent all through your data. Don't mix and match, okay? very important. Let's look at the top, third column called rep. Look at the rep. Um, this only carries the first name of the reps and it's consistent. Compare that to the second table where you have the reps and maybe the IDs. Some you have the rep and the phone number. Some you have the first name and the last name. So don't collect your data or aggregate your data like this. It's a bad data collection practice, okay? Let's look at items and units. So you can see all the items are collected in a single column. 
the units are collected in a single column. It's very easy for me to sum. If you're very good with Excel, you know that I can easily write a sum and you can sum these units and boom, you have a result. Compare that to this second table where you have 95 pencils sold, 50 binders sold, 36. If, you're, if I give you this data to analyze, you're going to spend the next three, four hours, depending on how good you are with Excel. Maybe if you're very good, it can take you 10 minutes or less but for some other people that you don't maybe know some of them you can take it especially if this is a lot of data you can take uh, um a very long hours trying to clean this data before you analyze and that's why people work hard right you see uh, um okay don't let me throw shades right uh well, I mean, the days of where payrolls were prepared in Excel, right? I mean, most of you on the call can, can relate. You see someone who prepare payroll for once is the salary week, the HR team, everyone is busy financing, trying to do payroll and so on. Um, spending one week, two weeks because of inconsistencies in data. But if all our data are properly um, organized, it's easier to work with them. So the same thing, units cost, everything, the, the structure is the same compared to this one that is not. Total, you can see they have all the same decimal places compared to the second table that is not. Okay, I just wanted to quickly chip in that um, best data practice. Okay, so we have our data. Again, don't merge. If you're very fond of merging data, don't to merge data, stop merging data. So, so especially if you want to analyze that data, stop merging. Okay. So we have columns and then we have rows for each of our employees. All right. And we also introduced what each of them are. Okay. Now let's quickly look at this. Um, let's quickly look at. So the next thing we understand the case study, which spoke about it. All right. Now the second is um, the data collection. OK, let me show you. Let me bring this sheet so that you can all see what I'm talking about. You remember the HR uh, process we, we talk about, I'm sorry, the, the data analytics process or the HR analytics process. We want to define our objectives, which we have done. The data collection, our data has already been collected. The third thing is now the data preparation. Let's now see what and what do we need to do in our data for us to be able to get it ready for what? Analysis, okay? So that is where exploring the data comes in. So for example, look at um, first of the salary column. You see that it's not properly formatted. So maybe you want to what? You want to click on the column. You want to go to the home tab and under the number um, ribbon, you want to click on um, comma, all right? Just so that I can properly format that uh, data. OK, so you can see that now I formatted it. It has two decimal places. I want to remove the decimal places. So what do I do? I go back to home. Under the numbers ribbon, I can now adjust the decimal places here, maybe to uh, adjust it twice. So I, I see that this is properly um, structured now. OK, the next thing, I can go to the date of birth column. You can see that this is written in numbers. Um, if you're not very familiar with um, how this works, uh, Excel, our dates are calculated um, in Excel by the number of days after, I think, um, the year 1900, if I'm not mistaken. So these are the number of days after that initial date, OK? So I just need to change the format. So I can go to Home tab. Under the same number ribbon, I can click on General or this drop down here. And then I can change this format to a short date, you can see. So if I click on short date, so you see the date of birth for all of this properly formatted. OK, let me move to the right as well. There's another date here, date of IR. I can do the same thing. You go to home, um, click on general, and then change this to a short date. Very good. OK, so. You can see we've been able to do this. Now, we need to do something else. Look at our date of birth. What we really need, we really don't need the date of birth of employees, right? Um, most times there is 
the, the, this is information that should even be protected. If you're trying to analyze the data, um, maybe sometimes there are instances where all of these personal PIIs are taken out um, for confidentiality purposes. But now let's look at in Excel, how do you extract age from a date? Okay, we want to be able to extract age because we actually need to put this age into bracket. Which one is 39? I mean, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, and so on, before we even start our analysis. So we are going to write a few formulas. I hope there are not people here that don't like writing um, formulas. Very, we're going to write a very simple formula, of course. Um, for those of us that are not very familiar with Excel or Excel formulas, apologies, you may need to take a very crash foundational course in Excel. Things that just, uh, what do you need? You just need things to like sum, uh, like count, uh, like average, all right? Um, uh, maybe lo look into how to do things like sum if, right? Count if, average if. After you've mastered this, that you can look at um, writing if statements in Excel. Okay, once this is mastered, you can look into maybe things like VLOOKUP, how to use VLOOKUP in Excel. You can look into how to work with conditional formatting. Conditional formatting. Okay, let me zoom in here so that we can all see. Okay, conditional formatting. And then um, once this is done, you can start looking at pivot tables. OK, very important pivot tables. OK, if you now want to do, do the master. So all of this, I'll say if I'm to. If I'm to rate all of this, I'll say everything from here to here are basic. Uh, basic. OK. Uh, maybe I'll look at this as intermediate. I'll look at this, this um, skills. So if you're looking to learn Excel, these are some of the things I'll tell you to look at um, intermediate. Then if, you're, if you want to do advanced, then this is where we start looking at um, uh, Power Query, this is where we start looking at VBA macros. VBA macros. This is where you start looking at. Um, so you look at Power Query. You look at VBA macros. Um, we can also look at things around uh, what if analysis or what if analysis. So I want us to drop in the chat, right? Just drop three things. Which of these? OK, no, no, let's let's do another level. Please be honest with yourself. Don't um, so that we know we can take a very simple. Um, very simple test, or maybe we make it, uh, maybe we just create a poll, right? So if you are, if you know all of these things, you can comment basic. If you don't have any idea of this, um, uh, Should we call it what do we what should we call it? Just let's just see um what what should be below basic? What should be below basic? Um what should be below basic? I don't want to say novice because people will not want to comment novice. Well, okay, yeah, let's just call it novice. So I want us to drop in the chat, okay? Which step, which 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 one, which of these best describe you? Or which of these best describe your knowledge of Excel? Okay. Which of these best describe your knowledge of Excel? Do you, are you a novice? So novice, yeah, blank. You've not used Excel before in your workplace. Okay. Um, basic, you at least, you can use some, you can use count, you can use average. Maybe you are still struggling with 
some if, count if, average if, or something. Then for intermediates, you can, you're very, very good. You can meander your way around if statements, complex if statement, VLOOKUP, conditional formatting, you can work with pivot tables. And then advanced, you can use Power Query very well. You can use VBA, you can build dashboards. Dashboards. Okay. Okay, so let's see. Let's see what the chat is saying. Okay, so there's a poll. So let's just vote. Let's just vote. So that we know where we start. So that we don't go and jump to advance when none of people are, are novice, right? So I'm seeing intermediate. I actually see one advance here. Very interesting. Um okay. So intermediate, novice, basic, no knowledge, no idea. So I'm seeing a lot of novice. Right, I'm seeing a lot of basic as well. I'm seeing, I see one advanced, one intermediate, a lot of basic. Okay, a lot of basic. Uh, a lot of basic. Okay, so okay, a lot of basic. All right. So what I'm going to do is, okay, basic, all right, basic. So let's do a very short crash course on basic Excel functions or Excel formulas. I'm just going to introduce Excel formulas and we'll get into our core business of the day. Okay, so, uh, one second, let me copy a data set. Okay. Let me copy a data set. I'm going to copy an HR data set and I'm going to paste it here. I want to do, let's do a crash course on. I came here trying to do pivot table, but let's, let's, let's do a crash course. Okay. Let's say this is um, a. Let's say this is a data set, uh, an HR data for employee wages. All right. So you have the first name, you have the last name, you have a column that says full name, you have gender, department, date of hire, work hours, and wages. Let's say the wages is. Let's say it is. $100 per hour for everybody. Okay, let's say the wages is $100 per hour for everybody. Now, let's look at Excel. Let's first look at the sum function. Okay, so we're going to look at sum, count, average. Okay, now in Excel, if you want to sum, let's say you want to sum these four numbers. Okay, all Excel functions start with an equal to sign. Okay, you start with equal to and then you type sum. Okay, now if you want to use any Excel function, you can read. Once you type that function, it says add all numbers in a range of cells. Okay, so sum. All right, so what is the next thing? You can either double click this or you open a bracket to open this. Now it says enter number one. So once you start an Excel function, you can supply all of these things inside our arguments and then it guide you on what they do, what to do. So you can see there is a bold number here that says number one and it's in bold. So what is the first number you want to sum? Let's say this. It's asking me to put a comma. I'm going to put a comma. Immediately I added that, the second number two became bold. So I can click on this, second bold, comma. I can click on number three, bold, right? If I, let's say this is the, these are the three numbers I want to sum. If I close this bracket and I hit enter, you can see I've been able to sum these three, 95.5 hours, right? But I have a lot of numbers. I cannot be doing that one after the other. So there's another way to do it. You can do sum, okay? Open, 
instead of supplying the numbers one by one, you can highlight, let's say, I like G2 to G12. Okay. Okay. Very, maybe let me take it a step back before I get into this. Now, in Excel, there's something they call the concept of rows and columns in Excel. And then there are what we call cells. If you look at this, if you look at this alphabet, what I'm currently on a column called column E, right? If I click on this, I'm on column F. If I click on this, I'm column G. If I click on this, I'm on column H. If I click on this, this is row four, this is row eight, this is row 11, this is row 14, this is row two, okay? However, if I click on this, this is a cell. If I click on one, this is a cell. A cell is, a, is an intersection between a column and what? And a row. Now, if I'm on this cell, and I want to ask Excel, what cell am I on right now? This is called cell G4. What that simply means is that this cell is located on column G, row four. So I'm currently on cell G4 now, okay? If I'm here, this is cell H9, okay? This is cell H9. So can someone quickly tell me what cell I'm on right now? What cell is this? One person to just quickly type it. What cell am I on currently? E10, very good. So I'm on cell E10. So that is how Excel address is. Now, if you want to reference any cell, like for example, if I come here and I type equal to, and I want to have the, what is here? Let's say this date. I want to have it here. I'm just going to come here and click on this. So what I'm telling Excel is give me the content of cell F7. Okay, give me cell F7. So if I click on this and I hit enter, it's going to give me 17th of February 1982 because I basically told Excel to give me the content of cell F7. Okay the content of cell F7. Now, let's go back to our sum because as I was doing G2 to G12 so that people don't get lost, okay? Now, we want to sum this. What I'm going to try to say is that Excel sum the content of cell G2 all the way to cell, say, G11, okay? If I close this bracket and I hit enter, what I have here is the sum. Now, I want to sum all of the work hours. So I'm going to, let me delete this. Let's say I want to sum all this. Now I'm going to say sum. I'm now going to open the bracket. I'm now going to highlight from G2. I'll keep highlighting till I get to the end of this data set. The end of this data set is G95, okay? So I close this bracket, enter. So in total, we have, 3,373 work hours reported for this month. Let's say this is a month, okay? 3,337 work hours. You can see, I just quickly did a sum. Let's say the same thing. I want to know what is the average work hours, okay? I have another Excel function here called average, okay? Average is like medium or mean, sorry, mean, okay? Average. The same way I can decide to click, if the numbers are within two or three, I can click them one by one, but they are a lot. So I can just click G2 and I continue highlighting all the way to what? All the way to G, what is this? G95, close the bracket, enter. So what I have here is on average, an employee works 35.88 hours. This is too long, so I can reduce the number of decimals. I go to home and I reduce this, okay? Let's say I want to make it one decimal place. So on average, an employee works 36 hours, okay? Now, I can also do the same thing for count. Let's just say I just want to know how many employees do we have in total, okay? How many employees do we have in total? So I can just count any of these rows, really. But it's best to count a row that has numerical values, okay? So I'm just going to count this row, G2, 
to G95. Close the bracket, enter. What this is telling me is that I have 94 employees. And if you want to confirm, if you take out row one and you come here all the way, you see that this is row 95. If you minus the header row, that is 94. You can see Excel very fast. So I did here, let me put it here. Here I did the sum. Here I did the average. All right, here I did what? The count. Very simple, right, so far. Now let's look at something a little more complicated. Let's say I have work hours here, I have wages here, and I want to get, um, I want to get the, I don't know what we call it now. So this is, sorry, wage per hour. Let's say this is wage per hour. Let's say this is wage per hour. So now, uh, wage per hour is hundred dollars. Okay. Now, what is my, what is the wages for each of these employee? What do I need to do? I only need to multiply the wage per hour multiplied by the numbers of hours worked. Okay. So I'm going to start with equal to sign. Okay. Now I can, there is a function called product in Excel, which allows you to multiply numbers. Okay. So you can do product. Click on the first number, comma, click on the second number, close the bracket, enter. You can see 4,000, very simple, 4,000. Another way I can do all of these things I did, you can also use arithmetic functions. You can use things like plus, you can use things like minus, you can use things like multiplication. What else? You can use all of this, um, you can use all of these as well, okay? So let's say I want to make it easy. Instead of going the product route, I want to multiply. I can equally just do this G2 multiplied by H2. Enter. I get the same result, 4,000. Now, let me tell you one beautiful thing about Excel. I don't need to repeat this thing I did here. I don't need to repeat it one by one for all of this. What I can do is to click on the first cell. Then I over on the bottom right hand corner. You can see that currently um, the Excel icon or this my cursor is a uh, is a white cross with a black border. If I want to drag this formula down, I want this to replicate for all the others. All I just need to do is to over my mouse at the bottom right hand corner of this cell, and you can see that the cursor will change. Once the cursor change, it means that you can click on that and drag it. So look at how. My cursor is going to change from a white cross with a black border to just a black cross. You can see. So now I can click on this and then what? I can drag this formula down. Okay, to all the others. What will this do? This will go ahead to multiply G3 now times H3, G4 times H4, G5 times H5, all the way to, to the bottom. So I've looked at some average counts and product. Product, okay? Let's say I want to now know what is my total wages. My total wages, all I can just do is to come here and say equal to sum again. Now I'm going to sum I2 to what? I'm going to sum I2 to I95. And you can see in total I'm paying how much is this? 337,000 as wages. So that's a very quick crash course on Excel basics. Okay, some average count products and all. So if you really want to take all of this, so you can, I'm gonna drop all of this in the chat. Um, you can use this on your learning path if you want to take uh, maybe these are some of the things that you want to pay attention to if you want to learn Excel. Okay. Other people may disagree with this, uh, with the which one is basic, which one is intermediate. But I mean, the most important thing is that you get the logic. Okay. So, however, what we are going to be discussing today is something very simple. 
we're not going to start with all the sum, the basic, because all of this, we, we expect that you can always pick a course. A YouTube, just go on YouTube, Excel basics. In less than 20 minutes, it teaches you all of these things I, I already mentioned. Today, we're going to look at something. We're trying to look at pivot tables and how it is a great analytics tool in Microsoft. It saves you all the pain of writing complex formulas in Excel. Okay, so with just this, you can analyze a lot of data because we are focusing on analytics. We are not just trying to teach Excel. We are focusing on analytics, okay? And pivot tables allow you to create very powerful analytics from your data. In fact, I define pivot tables. A pivot table is a powerful tool to calculate, to summarize, and analyze data that lets you see comparisons, that lets you see patterns and trends in your data. So pivot tables are one of Excel's most powerful features. A pivot table allows you to extract significance from a large and detailed data set. So you see all of the, you see this data set, you see how intimidating and, and large it is it, right? Or it is. We can use pivot tables to quickly summarize the data. So think of a pivot table as you summarizing a very large table into simple tables. Okay. Now, I was saying something the other time. I want to do something. This is my date of birth, right? I want to extract the age. We are currently still in the data. Um, what's it called? We're currently in the in the data preparation stage. Okay, data preparation number three. So we're trying to prepare our data. We have date of birth, we want to extract age. So I'm gonna call me, I'm gonna create a new column and I'm gonna call this column age. Um, so you can see it clearly. I'm going to hide all of this. I will hide it later. So let me just hide this and I can zoom in, okay? So now I have the date of birth and I want to extract age. Now, there's a formula that allows me to extract age from data. There are a number of ways to extract age from data anyways. Let me teach you the simple one. If you don't remember all of the formulas, there's a formula in Excel called today. Okay. What does today do? Let's read this. It says today's return the current date formatted as date. So if you type in today in your Excel, is that equals to today? open and close bracket is going to give you the current date. So the current date, um, today's date is 7th of February, 2024. Okay, now when you close your Excel and open it up tomorrow, the date is going to change tomorrow. Okay, now this is very powerful if you want to calculate age, because if you know today's date, how do you calculate age? Is it not just to subtract um, the date of birth, from today's date, right? Oh, sorry, this is negative. I want to do this minus this, okay? So it says that 14,822 days, right? Between these two days. Now, you want to convert it to year, right? So what do you do? You can put this in a bracket. Let me start again for benefits of people that, that you know, I told you how to do plus, minus, and everything. So this is my end date minus F2, my start date. So I have this, right? 14,822. Now, I want to make convert these days. I want to convert it to year. So I can either do it in a different, different column, but I love to write. Okay, let's just do it in a different column. Okay, so I can come here and say divide this number of days by what? 365. I know that it's not exactly 365, but if you want to be extra perfect, you can do 365.25 to account for leap year. So what does this give you? It says, it says that this is what? 40.5 years. We don't want the fraction because someone cannot really be 40.5 years. We just need the integers all right and you don't want to approximate also okay so 
um, you don't want to say, maybe for example, if you just approximate, this will approximate to 41. If someone is 40.5 years, you're still assumed to be 40, okay? So you can write another function called integer, okay? Equals to integer. So this int or int, it gives you just the, uh, the whole number and, and gets rid of all the fraction. So this is the number, close bracket, enter. So you see, this is what we want to do. We want to, so we first got today's date. We subtracted our start date from our end date. Then we divided by 365, okay? And then we remove the integers, okay? Now, this is a long way of doing things, okay? Um, in Excel, I always tell people, you don't work hard, you work smart, okay? There are a number of ways. Um, so I'm seeing Tom in the chat say, yes, yeah, they can do this as well. I just wanted to go the easy route so that we, I break down what um, we are doing, okay? Somebody said the date I shared is not exactly the same way it is in the data set. Yes, I mentioned earlier that you have to click on the column first. You have to go to home. And you have to go to number and change this from number to date. You currently see it as general. This is what you will see. But you have to change it from general to a short date. And that's where um, you see the date. Okay. Now, there's another way. So you can decide to do it like this. Again, I've written this formula in four columns. It doesn't mean we cannot combine it all into one, but we just wanted to. Um, be sure that everyone can follow. We can also use a function called date div. Okay. Um, I, unfortunately, I don't have date div. If I, I don't know if it has been discontinued or if it's no longer useful. So if you have, if it's type equals to date div, and you can see it, you can also use date div to do this. It's going to ask you for start date and end date, and then you still get all of the things I mentioned earlier. Another function you can use is a function called year frac. This is what I use. So this one says it returns the year fraction representing the number of old days between a start date and end date. So you can use date div, you can use year frac, and you can go the other way. So just pick any one. It's really not complicated. So what is my start date? My start date is my date of birth, which is F2, right? You can see. Uh, when you're writing a formula, just follow the argument. The first argument says start date. So you put the start date and you put a comma. The next argument is what? End date. So what is my end date? We can embed another function here. Just say today. My end date is today. So what you're saying is that today is going to ch keep changing. Today is not just one static date. The reason why you cannot just put today's date, just put maybe seven, um, two. So that's what some people do, right? So you do this. But this is not the best practice at coding formulas in um, at coding values in Excel, because what will happen tomorrow, next tomorrow, or next year? So you see, someone is just forty years all through. The person's age is not increasing. However, if you use a function like today, okay, you don't need to worry about the formula anymore. Even if you come and come back next fifty years. Because today keeps changing, the person's age will keep adjusting. Again, let me just say this. We can really not exhaust all of the possibilities of Excel formulas or analytics in this training. So if you're an organization here, you're looking for specialized training in Excel, in Power BI, in analytics, please, um, after the end of this session, or you can drop it in the chat or you can drop your interest, someone would reach out to you and we can have a well detailed training for your organization. It could be for your staff, for your IT team, uh, for your HR team, or even generally. As HR professionals, I know that we all have maybe um, training needs, right, for our staff members. So we can actually break down all of this and do a proper in-depth Excel and analytics training for members of your organization, okay? So I'm just going to gloss over this because we cannot um, spend so much time. So we start with the start date. The end date is today, comma. Now it's asking us 
um, do we want the actual or the just go with actual? So just respond with one, right? So this one is saying, do we want the actual or the actual days in 360 or 365 or the European date? Then I'm just going to say one just to give me the actual. So enter. So you can see this converted into a date. Um, so I'm going to come back, go to home, convert this to a number. This is what we want to see. So you can see that same long process I did the other time. This gave me the same thing. So the formula again is year frac F2 today and then one. The same thing, date diff will give you the same result. Now, I don't need the age to be 40.58, like I said. So what can I do? I can enclose this formula in an integer. OK, I can do this in a separate column, but I don't want to keep creating columns. So I'm just going to come to this formula. So this is the formula like before. So I'm going to put it in a bracket. OK. All I want to and I'm going to come in front of it and say int. So I want this to just give me the integer. Right, I only want the was the word. I only want the whole number. I don't want the fraction. So click enter. So you can see this man is 40 years. Let me remove the decimal. What can I do next? I can drag this down or I can double click at the right bottom right. Double click everybody's age. You can see 48, 35, 46, 40, 36 and so on and so forth. You can see very, very simple stuff. OK. So let me unhide this, right click, unhide, oh sorry, right click, unhide. So now we are back. Let's now get into our pivot table. How do we get into pivot table? We go to the insert tab. So everyone, you can check on your laptop, right, if, or your Excel. If you go to insert tab, you're going to see something here that says pivot table. OK, someone says, can I repeat the calculation of the ins? Yes, I can. So this is it. Let me remove this. Let me remove this. If you don't put the ins, this is what you get. You can see that this man is 41 years and he was 40 years. So let me tell you, because there, were, there was a decimal, right? And if you approximate 40.58, you can see it gave me 41. This man that is 48 years old is now 48.7. So if you try to remove, if you don't use integer, you just did this. You can see this man is now 41 years. This man is now 49 years. And whereas they were just 40 and some months, 48 and some months, that was why the integer was necessary. So all we just did is equal to integer. If you know you cannot write everything on the same column, just do this integer. You click on this, close bracket, enter. You can see. So integer, you can see. So just write it. But because I'm, I know how my way around, I'm just going to wrap this formula in an integer. OK? Enter. Or you can also use round down. If you're very good with Excel, you can use round down. OK? Delete. So that is how this works. So. Pivot tables, you go to insert, you click on, you see, pivot tables, and you can see pivot table from table or range, okay? Pivot table from table or range. So I'm going to click on this. So now, once you click on pivot table from table or range, you're going to see your data, your data range. So it says my data is from, I don't know if you can see this very clearly, it says my data is from A1, to 0312. Okay, that is what this thing says. Okay, that is just people to be just trying to know where is my data, where is my current my current data. However, let me tell you also if you're very if you've been using pivot table, there is a best practice that you should use for pivot table. All of in addition to all of everything I mentioned earlier around structuring your data and all, it's also good to format your data as a table. If you're using pivot table, let me tell you why. Currently, if you don't format your data as a table, let me show you this. When you create a pivot table, you can see when you're creating a pivot table, it recognizes your data range. And you can see this stopped at. 312, right? What happens when you add more data in future? 
it is not going to be a part of your pivot table. Right, and you want you want pivot table to be automated in such a way that when new data comes in, all you need to do is to refresh, and then it pulls up that new data and adds it into uh, uh, into your report. So the best way to go around this is I'm going to close this now. I'm going to highlight all my data. Okay, I'm going to come here. I'm going to highlight to the right. You can also do Control Shift right if you're very good and then do control shift down or just I like the entire data set. And then you go to. Um, how, do you, how do you come back to table again? You insert, go to insert and then click on table. So I like your data, go to insert, click on table. OK, so this is it. Where is your table? My table has headers. OK, so now I formatted this data as a table. Right. What did I do? I like the data. Go to insert, click on table, or just do Control T on your keyboard. I like your data and do Control T. Copy. You highlight everything and convert to a table. Now, if I go to insert and I go to pivot table now, you can see that it's no longer saying my data is from A1 to O. It's just saying table two because it recognizes that this is a table. So when you come tomorrow and you add, let me close this. Let me show you something. When you come tomorrow and you add a data to this, let's say you add Fatai Sani to this data. Notice something. Immediately, the, the table expanded to include my name. Let's add another name here, Sani Fatai. You can see the table will keep expanding, right? So this is a better way to, to, to work with your data than for you to just highlight the rows and columns, okay? So let me delete that. So now I click anywhere in my data. And of, of course, once you format it as a table, you don't even need to highlight again to go to, to go to pivot table. Just click anywhere in your table, go to insert and click on pivot table. Now pivot table will ask you, where is your data? My data is in table two. The next thing it says, choose where you want the pivot table to be placed. You can either place it in a new worksheet on existing, just leave it as default. Just you put it in a new worksheet. Don't worry about adding this to your data model. So your table is noted, your new worksheet, just leave the default settings and click OK. Once you see that, um, you see that a new sheet is created. We can name this sheet analytics or analysis. OK. Now we are trying to get started with our analysis. I'm going to zoom in for better visibility. OK, analysis. Remember the steps we are following. Define the objectives we've done. Collect your data. We've done that. Data preparation. We've done that. Now we want to do our data analysis. Someone said I should repeat the formatting as table part. Very simple. Control A or I say Control A. I like your data, then hold Control C on your keyboard or go to Insert and click on Pivot Table. Okay, go to Insert and sorry, go to Insert and click on Table to format as Table. Okay, once you are done with that, you then click anywhere in your data. You go to Insert and then click on Pivot Table again. If you click on pivot table, you automatically highlight your table range and then just leave. You're not changing anything here. Leave this as new sheet, leave your table range and click OK. That's what you're doing here. Once you do this, you get a new sheet created for you. And this sheet says pivot table and then you're going to see a pop up on your right hand side here. What you see on your right hand side are the headers or the column headers in your data set. OK. So you see your column headers, all right? Employee name, employee ID, salary, position, state, date of birth, sex, marital description, citizen, everything you have in here is what you have here. Everything in uh, in row one, employee name, employee ID, salary, position, state, date of birth, and so on. So everything we have, OK? Um, for best practice, you can try to um, arrange your data. So business case comes first, 
let the data follow. So you can click and drag. So business case data analysis. Then if you get a dashboard, we create dashboard next. OK, so. Now, what are pivot tables? Like I said, so this is these are all your data. So pivot table allows you to create um, an aggregate table right from a bigger table. So you can see all of the data here. OK, let's say you just want to know what are the positions in your what are the different unique positions in the organization? You come in here and all you just need to do, you see columns here, you see rows, you see values. So that tells me that all I need to do, I can drag positions, I can drag it to rows, just click and drag to rows. And you can see all your unique positions. OK. Click positions and drag. You can see this is just so all you just need to do in pivot table is to click the table or all the table you want and then drag it to each of these boxes, either to rows, to column and values. And how you do you even create a table? You create a table by, by, by creating a row, right? A column. Insert, uh, let me see. So tables comprise of row, column, and then the values. So this tells you that in creating a pivot table, we drag some item to the row, we drag some items to the columns, and then we drag some item to the values. OK, so in our case, how do you remove this? Let me drag this out, right? Or you can right click and say remove. So what table you want to create? If you want to create a, a pivot table, you are going to drag some elements. Let's say, for example, you want to know the sex or the gender in the organization. So you, I'm going to drag sex. I'm going to drag it to rows. You can see there are only two, F and M, male and female. OK, so if I what if someone says, what if I don't want to drag it to rows? What if I want to drag it to column? Well and good. You can drag it back into columns. OK, someone says I see in the chat and it says um, I don't have the pivot chart by the side. How do I bring it up? Very simple. You can only see this pivot chart if you click on the pivot table. If you click here, the pivot chart disappears. Let me close this. If you click any random place in your in your Excel sheet, the pivot chart disappears. If you click on the pivot table, it comes up. But let's say I mistakenly close this. All right. How do I bring it back? Right click and say show field list. OK, and then it comes back. OK, right click on the pivot table, show field list and it comes back. OK, so now we have a pivot table. OK, so let's start answering the question. So again, we have all our columns here. All we just need to do to create pivot table is to drag the columns to the rows. Um, or the headers to the rows and then values. So usually, right, values are usually numerical values. So either you want to sum, you want to count, or you want to get average. OK, so in our own case, if I want to know. Um, let's say, for example, the marital status and how many employees are fall into this each category, I'm going to drag the marital description into the rows. OK, I'm going to drag marital and I'm now going to drag either the employee ID. Just look for a numerical value and drag the numerical value into the value. So it's going to do a count or a sum. OK, so let me remove this and then we start again. Someone say, can I do this on Google Sheet? Yes, you can create paper tables on Google Sheet. But I would advise you to do this in Excel because there are some functionalities that are different when you work with pivot tables in Excel and in Google Sheets. But if you are conversant with Google Sheets, please feel free to use Google Sheets. OK, let's go back to our business case. The very first question is, what is our staff strength? OK, let's go to analysis. So this is our first pivot table. 
what do we do? This one, all we need to do is to do a count, all right, of the total employee. So we can choose any of the columns to count. We can decide to count employee name. We can decide to count. We just need to do a count of this total column to know how many employees. How do you do that? We can just drag any of the column. Let's say employee name or employee ID, for example. We can drag it into the values now. This one, we don't need to drag to columns or row because this one we are trying to aggregate. So values is only for aggregated, um, for aggregation, okay? So I'm going to release my employee ID, but look at what happens. In values, you can do different things, okay? Most, like, you know, most times it defaults to sum, but we are not trying to sum employee ID because it really doesn't make sense. What we are trying to do is to count the number of employee IDs. So how do we, what do we do? I can click on this drop down. If you look at my mouse, I click on the drop down. I go to value field settings and I can change this. OK, from some I can change it to count. OK, so it says count of employee ID. All right, I can give it a custom name. OK, I'm just going to say employees. OK. So count, OK. So now this has changed to count. So you can see this is what 311 employees. Let's confirm. Someone may say, oh, how are we sure? OK, so I'm going to come here and do control down. So you can see this says 312 employees. Someone may say, yeah, see, got you. Excel is not right. This says 312, but you're saying 311. But very simple. The reason for that is that we have a header. OK, so if you take out the header, that's 311 employees, all right? So you can see 311 employees, very, very simple. Someone say, can I take the count again? Sure. I'm gonna remove what I did. I'm gonna drag this and remove it. Let's start from scratch. I pulled in, let's say I, I can even try it with an employee name. If you drag in something that is not a numerical value, it defaults to a count, like for example, Let's say it's employee name I dragged into this. You can see it just count because you cannot sum employee name. But employee ID is a numerical value. So if you drag in employee ID, it sums it. So all I just did was to change the sum to count. Okay. So let me pull this out. Let me use employee ID. I drag in employee ID um, and drag it into values. Okay. You click on the drop down, go to value field settings. Change from sum to count. All right. I also want to change the name. Instead of count of employee ID, I just want to say employee. So I'm going to go to value field settings again, and I can change this to employees. Okay. Employees. All right. Very simple. So I have how many? 311 employees. Let's look at another question. It says, what is the gender distribution of our workforce? Very simple. So now I need to create another pivot table. So someone is going to say, oh, wow, do I need to start all of that process again, copy the data, go to next, create a pivot table? No, you don't have to do that. Because we already have a pivot table, or we can just copy, okay? Just highlight the pivot table, control C, and then control V. I'm just going to come here. Maybe come here and say control V. So I've been able to duplicate this pivot table. Okay, let me zoom in further. So it's simple and easy to look at. Okay, so now I have two tables. Now I want to now see, I want to still see my total employee, which is 311, but I want to see by gender. So what am I going to do? I'm going to drag sex, I'm going to drag it to what? To rows. Okay. Drag sets to rows. And ladies and gentlemen, can you see what is what I'm seeing? So this broke down the same 311, but now it broke it down into the number of males and the number of females. So you can see we have 176 and 135 and a total of 311. Pivot table, very, very simple. We don't need to write any formula. We don't need to do any calculation. Just click, click click, click, drag, and drop. Okay, so we have the total employees, and then we have employees by gender. 
Okay. So I may say, okay, why not instead of F and M, why not female and male? Yeah, you can change this. Okay. You can change this. Um, so someone says go over the grand total. Okay, I'm gonna do that. So let me remove the sex and the employees again. So now I'm starting again. This is the second pivot table blank. I'm gonna do what? Drag sex to rows. Okay, so you see F and M. So you're gonna now do the same thing again. Drag employee ID to values. Now you have to go through the process of going here, going to value field settings, changing it to counts, and of course, just see employees or just see number of employees, anyone that works for you, employees. So you see F, M. Someone says, how do you know where to drag what? It's very simple. The categorical labels, you want to know number, let me show you, number of employees by gender. There are two things here, number of employees. Let me break down these two. Uh, let me break down. There are two things here, number of employees, then gender. Can you see? Now, this is a categorical value. So definitely, this will only go into column or a row. Okay, you see gender here. So you can only, there are only two places you can put it. The categorical values can only go into gender or columns, and uh, into rows or columns. So either you put it on rows or you put it in columns. Um, okay, you saying I already have a data, so let me move this, Control X, Control V, All right? So you can only put it in rows or you put it in columns, but you can see it looks prettier on the rows than on the columns, All right? So there are instances where you need to use the rows and the columns together, but we've not gotten there, but it's better. Just by default, put categorical values in the rows. Then the aggregate number of employees. This can be anything. This may not only be number. It could be um, sum of salary, which we are going to get to. It could be sum of salaries. It could be um, number of absent days. Anything. All of these are aggregates. All the aggregates are going to go into values. Anything you aggregated that require you to sum or count or average, anything that requires you to do any mathematical computation goes into the what? Goes into the values. In my own case, we are doing a count of employees. So all we did was to drag employee ID or employee name into the values. Okay. I hope that, that answers that question. So just that's the basic logic. So Rows and column goes for categorical values. Then the values goes for numerical, uh, the numerical values. That's the tautology, but you get the gist. Okay, so the next question. What is the visa status of our current employees? All right, it would be nice to visualize employees requiring assistance with their, vis with their visas. Okay, so here I'm going to go to data. What is the column that speaks to visa? Uh, so let's see. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I'm gonna go to the right. And okay. So let's look at the citizen description. Okay. So this gives an idea. If I click on the drop down, you can see eligible, non-eligible U.S. citizen. Very good. This is the column I need. So I'm gonna go to my analysis. I'm gonna duplicate this pivot table again. So for the people that are asking, how do I duplicate the pivot table? Just watch. I like one of the pivot tables. Oh, sorry. I like the pivot table. Control C. Come here anywhere, control V, just paste it. Just copy a pivot table and paste it somewhere else. Very simple. However, you have to know something, right? A pivot table cannot overlap another pivot table. Say, for example, we can see here I have gender, right? Let's say I now want to add um, something that is going to go beyond these two columns. Let's something that is going to come here. Let me look for something like that. Let's say I want to put employee name in rows. I'm going to get an error. So let me say I drag employee name to rows. 
I'm going to get an error. It says we couldn't complete this action for the pivot table two in the blah, 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 because there is already a pivot table there. Make space and try again. So anytime you eat this pivot table, just know that the data you are trying to, the pivot table you are trying to create is going to, there's already data that is blocking the creation of that pivot table. So in that case, let's say I want to create something that is going to go beyond this. I can move this pivot table instead of putting it here. I can move this and maybe put it somewhere else. Maybe like put it here. That way, if I come back in here and I put employee name under here, you can see I have all the freedom to do what I want. So just in case you hit that error, just create space and try again. So I'm going to copy this and put it back in here. So the third question we are trying to answer is around gender distribution. So what I'm going to do, since I already have numbers of employees and this is not going to change, I'm going to leave that. I'm only going to remove the sex. I can just uncheck this box. All right. All I just need to do is to come to citizen description and drag it to what? To rows. Very simple. Okay. Citizen. So you see here, eligible non-citizen, 12. Non-citizen, 4. U.S. citizen, 295. I can rename this column. You can call it visa status or something. You can give it any name. Let's just call this visa status, right? You can see the employees. So we have 295 employees that are US citizens, four are non-citizens, and then maybe 12. Let's say these are the ones requiring assistance with their visa, or let's say these 16. Depends on what we um, agree on to be employees requiring visa status, okay? Let's quickly move on. He says, the next one, aging workforce analysis. What percentage of our employees are close to retirement? This one is a little tricky. So let's come here. I'm going to copy this and paste this here. Let's start with this. So what do I need to uncheck here? I need to remove the citizen description. Okay. Now I need to put, remember the age we created. I'm going to drag the age and I'm going to take the age to rows. Now, you see here we have the ages, age 31, we have three employees that are 31. We have two employees that are 32. We have six employees that are 33. So we have the different ages from 31 up the way to 73. But I need you all to understand something. There's a difference between reporting on data and then communicating insights. Okay? What we have here are just data. They are not insights. Okay? What we have here are data. They are not insights. So we need to be able to communicate this in such a way that we can extract insights from this data. Okay? One moment, please. Okay? So now we need to aggregate this data. There are two ways to go about this. We can either do it from the data point where we write, so we can come here and say, maybe write an if statement, but I didn't want us to go that route because we are just, we're trying to make something that works for everybody. So writing if statements um, may be complex, okay? So what we are going to do is, um, we're going to group this data, okay? So let's say we want to group from, 31, so I'm going to highlight from 31 to 40. Look at this right now, okay? I'm going to group this, okay? 31 to 40. So 31 to 40, I'm going to group, and I'm going to right click and say group, okay? One second. I'm going to say group, okay? So it says group one, right? 31 to 40. So I can rename this group and say, these are the people that fall between the ages 31 to 40. Okay, that is group one. I'm gonna do the same thing. I like 41 down to what? 50, right click group okay because really we need the group we don't need 
the individual, how many people are 41 years, how many people, it's not really important. So this is what? 41 to what? 50. Okay, let's do the start grouping. 51 to say 60. Depends on how you want to categorize this in your organization anyway. You can feel free to do any other grouping aside mine. So the third group is 51 to 60. And then maybe that final one, we can just call this final group above 60, or let's just say 60 plus. Right click, group. So we can just say, I'm going to say 60 plus, but feel free to say above 60. So with this now, you can either expand or you can collapse. Expand, collapse, expand, collapse. So you see what we've been able to do with this data. From just the date of birth only, we've been able to aggregate and analyze. Now we can see they have 132 staff members that are between the ages of 31 and 40. OK, we have 41 to 50 that are between um, that are um, we have 108 staff members that are between 41 and 50. We have 57 staff members that are between 51 and 60. And then we have 14 that are between, um, that are both 60. When we get to our visualization, we'll be able to spotlight that now we see that about 35% of our workforce are close to retirement age. These are the kind of insights, all right? that we need to present so that we can start our succession planning, okay? Very easy, okay? So please, if we are following and we are all aligned, please drop a, drop a like, drop an emoji, let me know that we are still flowing, okay? Someone says, can we, Abosele says he or she is lost. Don't be lost. OK, what we just did, let me quickly do it again. Right click, let me ungroup everything. Um, Ctrl Z. So I'm going to highlight all this, right click, and ungroup everything. This was where we started from. We wanted to group this data. What did we do? Right click from 31 to 40. Oh, sorry, I said right click. Highlight from 31 to 40. Right click it and group. Okay. And we are going to rename it from group one. We're going to call this band 31 to 40. You can say 31 to 40 years. There are no out of fast true, just 31 to 40. Oh, this is not visa status again. Let's just call this age uh, band or something. Okay. Then we highlight from 41 to 50. OK, 31 to 50, right click, and then we group. Group two, this group, we call them 41 to 50. OK, then a third group, group 51 to 60, highlight and group. This group, we call it 51 to 60. Then, we have the last group, which is what? Right click, group, and then we say above 60. Okay? Interesting. So we've done it again. Okay? So now we see our distribution, all right, across our age. Now, pay attention. We are currently doing the pivot table because once we do the pivot table, it is the pivot table that we will now use, right? It is the pivot table that we will now use to build this dashboard. So this beautiful dashboard you're seeing right here is going to be like, for example, we have male, female. You can see we already created this. Employee visa status. You see we already created this, 12, 4, 22, 95. Workforce age bracket. I can see we already created this 31 to 40, 41 to 50, 51 to 60, above 60. Can you see that we are getting there? Right? Can you see that we are getting there? All right. But we need to create all the people tables because we need to also make it dynamic such that people can easily filter 
and highlight what they want to see. Okay, Excel is very interesting. Analytics is very, very interesting. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Okay, someone say, what is the current, or I'm um, sorry, um, still looking at the email from Janet. What is the current age bill of all staff members? Okay. Before we get there, it's also important to note that it may not even be um, ideal to say, just show the numbers. Maybe we want to say, the question says, what percentage of our employees are close to retirement? So we can do this, okay? We can bring in employees again, or we can change. Remember what I said, employees now, if you click on this drop down in employees, if you go to value field settings, you can change this from, um, instead of summarize values by, you can click this show values as, and change this no calculation to percentage of grand total. I'm going to take this again. I know that some people will not get it. Um, percentage of grand total. If I click OK, so now this tells me, oh, 22% of our staff. OK, so instead of showing the numbers, because you want to see this, the, the question says what percentage of our employees are close to retirement. OK. So we see that, for, so the, instead of showing the numbers, right? So we see 42% are between age 31 and 40, 41% between, I'm oh sorry, 34% between 41 and 50, 18% between 51 and 60, and 5%, 4.5% between age above 60. How did I do this again? Click on the drop down, um, click on value field settings, and then instead of summarize value by, I went to show value as. Show value as. Then I clicked on this drop down and changed this to percentage of grand total. Percentage of grand total. So this gives me the percentage of my grand total. OK, and then I save this figure. OK, let's quickly move on. We're running out of time. What is the current wage bill? This should be current. So please help me correct it in, <laughs> in your workbook. So what is the current wage bill? Don't let me copy this one. Let me copy this one. Okay, Control C. Let's utilize this space as well. Control V. Okay. What is the current wage bill? I'm going to remove citizen description. This one is very simple. I'm going to remove employees as well. What do I need to put in here? Go to data. You see, we have a where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Salary. Very simple. Go to analysis and drag. We want to drag salary to what? To the values. So you see, very simple. Very simple. Sum of salary, you can see 21. Um, four six five. So go to home. Uh, let me format this properly. I go to home. I click on comma. Then I can remove the decimals. So see, this is twenty one million. I can also put the dollar sign. So come in here, click on the drop down, and put dollar. So this is twenty one million. Twenty one million annually. Uh, annually, that's the the, the salary. Twenty one point four million. OK, let's go. The next question, which of our, our hiring sources are most effective and which should we discontinue? So very simple, you know that this is going to be um, looking at the number of employees that came through the different recruitment source. OK, so we're going to plot employees against recruitment source. OK, very simple. We come in here, I like the data, copy anyone, you can copy any of the tables really. Come here, paste it. Now, I don't want gender anymore. What I want is what? 
recruitment source. I'm going to drag recruitment source to rows. So you can see these are all the recruitment source. Career Builder has 20, brought in 23. Let me sort. Right click. I'm going to click the number and then sort largest to smallest. So Indeed, we have 87 employees from Indeed. LinkedIn, 75. Google said 49. You can see the ones that are not doing very well. We didn't bring, we didn't get a lot of candidate from our website. We didn't get a lot of candidate from order. We didn't get a lot of candidate from online application. So as part of our recommendations, we should be targeting this uh, recruitment source or recruitment sources. Okay. Moving on. All right. The final one says, um, how has our hiring trended over time? Are there any particular insights we can get? This one is a little bit tricky. Now, all we have is our date of hire. Okay? Our date of hire. And we want to know how many employees came in. But Excel is very smart. You'll be surprised. So let me copy this. Control C. I'm not going to paste this here. Control V. I'm going to remove recruitment source. I'm going to leave employees, of course, because we still need it. Now I'm going to drag date of hire. I'm going to drag date of hire and I'm going to drag it into rows. Now, see beautiful thing that happened. All I added was just the date, but Excel aggregated the data for me or sort of grouped the data for me. So now I have all the years, 2016, 17, all the way to 2018. If you look at the rows, you can see that this was broken down into years, quarter, months. I can even remove the year, the quarter, and the month if I don't need them. Okay. Someone may say, oh, when I dragged my own, it didn't group this data. It just showed me the date. So let's look at that as well. I'm going to right click here and say on group. So you can see. Let's say this is what you saw. It just brought in the date of IR. It just brought in each employee and then the date they joined the organization. But we want to argue, we want to group. So what do we do? Right click and then we group. So this one is going to ask, how do you want to group? I want to group in years. If you also want to group in months and quarters, you can do that. But let's just say I just want to group in years. Okay. This is my start date, my end date. Okay. So you can see 2016 all the way to 2018. These are all the staff that joined and the hiring trend. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we've successfully um, answered all of these seven questions. Well, it's nice. Now, Janet went on to say, it will be nice to have this as an interactive dashboard. So different managers and department head can filter the report as suitable. This is where data presentation comes in. Again, coming back to this, you've defined the objectives. We've collected the data. We've prepared the data. We've analyzed the data. Now we need to what? Do five and six. Interpret, interpretation and insight, then communicate the finding. And this is where I spoke about last week, where you need to identify which uh, method should you use when presenting your finding. There are some people, they love PowerPoint. So after you are done with this, you're only going to create charts and then put it on PowerPoint, put it on presentation format and send it, all right? There are some people, they want interactive dashboard because they want to be able to filter and slice and dice. And that is what Janet wants. And that is what we are going to do. It doesn't mean we cannot call, group this data and, and start building charts in PowerPoint. Of course we can do that. But we want to go the dashboard route. Okay? We are out of time, unfortunately. Um, I love to train and I can go on and on and on. But we need to wrap up. Next week, what we are now going to do is to convert these pivot tables and this analysis into these visuals. All right, I'm going to bring it up again. We're going to convert that into this. Okay, that is what we're going to be doing next week. All right, 
Now, how do we say someone say, ah, but it's, it's still, it's, I saw this thing. I saw they did this thing in Excel. I saw maybe, is this not Photoshop? But it's not. You can see that it's changing, which means that everything here is happening within Excel. What we are just going to be doing next week is to highlight this, go to inserts, click on the chart, and bring in the right chart. This is how it's going to start. Okay? This is how it's going to start. Then we are going to fine tune, fine tune, format, 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 till we get the right dashboard that we want. We're also going to be leveraging on this collateral, so we have the Covenant logo, and then we have the colors. Let's say these are the colors of the companies we have this year. And then we have some very beautiful male and female icons here that we are going to be using to create our dashboard. Okay? Now, let me quickly look at... Uh, oh, sorry. I wasn't supposed to minimize that. Let me bring it back up. Let's look at some of the quick questions that we have. Um, someone dropped um, that they wanted it, an Excel and Power BI training for their staff in the organization. Yes, so please drop your contact, maybe just your email address, right? And then our team is going to reach out or are going to reach out to you, okay? Our team are going to reach out um, to you, okay? Um, also, um, for organizations that are looking to have, you know, we spoke about ex, um, Office 365 or M365. Most of these functionalities that we have in Excel today, um, most organizations already have M365, but they are not exploring the value, right? We're not exploring the value to the, to, to the fullest. So Reliance Info System also has an offer called the license to value offer, which we are going to come in or you can schedule a call. We come in and then we advise on best practices and how to utilize your licenses to the full uh, potential. All right. So um, there's going to be a form that is going to be dropped. It's called a license to value offer. So if you currently have M365 or any of the Microsoft 365 suits and you want to utilize your um, license, or you want to know what are some of the things that you, you can even do with the license that you have. So there's a, license, there's a form that has been dropped right now by Ken De Ujo. I'm going to go ahead and pin, and pin this to the chat, to the, to the top of the, of the chat. So you feel free to click on this form. Uh, our team of experts are going to come on a call for you and explain or show you some of the value that you can explore. We spoke about Viva Insight. We spoke about Viva Learning. Some of these things, you don't even need to pay any extra cost. They're already in your license already. You just need to utilize them, okay? So um, this is called the license to value motion. So you can feel free. There's a form right now that has been pinned. Feel free to click on it. And of course, we can contact you and of course, explore how you can better use your license um, in your organization. The other motion is the Modiva uh, motion. We mentioned that last week. In Modiva, we train your IT team. We don't just train them, all right? We give them materials that they need to pass a Microsoft certification exam, right? We don't stop there. We help train them or we give them materials and resources, all right, to practice the exam. We show them how to schedule for a Microsoft certification exam, and then we pay for these exams all for free, right? <laughs> for free. We train your IT team, whether in cybersecurity, whether in database management, whether in data analytics, all right? We train, I mean, we give them resources they need, we give them vouchers, exam vouchers to write their exams for free, all right? If you want to, of course, benefit from this offer, there is also another form right now called the Modiva program. Of It's not available to HR people, only your IT team members, all right, or your core IT team, okay? So please feel free to share this with them. 
We can onboard them and then we can guide them. So they go, we guide them through a learning path. And after they have, they've completed the learning path, we then give them a voucher to write that exam for free. Okay. Feel free to follow us on LinkedIn, um, on all social media platforms. Most of the slides, so I'm seeing questions around us dropping the slides, um, the training. Of course, this Excel training, this Excel slide, I dropped it in the chat, um, right? Um, if you want um, every other thing recording and the slide, that will be shared at the later part of the session. If you want to have a comprehensive Excel training for your organization, not only your I, not only your HR team, it could be any of the core functional teams. Um, please you can drop your contact in the chat and we're going to reach out to you. OK, we're going to reach out to you and then we're going to train your organization. This one is not for free, maybe just a very small cost. OK, ladies and gentlemen, I want to believe we have come to the end of our session today. We are one minute over time, and I want to keep it at that. Thank you very much for joining this session with Reliance Info Systems. Thank you for being a part of this people analytics training. I want to congratulate you because the knowledge that you are going to get from this program is really transformational and is going to pivot your organization to the next level. Thank you very much. Once again, my name is Sandy Fatai, and it's been a pleasure.